Hi folks, nine ways to crash your CNC machine. Number one, feed rate override. We here at Saunders Machine Works have the blue hose rule. We've since lost the blue hose, but our rule is we have to place something blue on the machine keyboard or on the machine itself to remind you that you are using feed rate override. When you're done with feed rate override, the touch screen is great from Tormach. Just hit those buttons to reset to 100%. Number two, accidentally transposing your tool height numbers. 3.793, 3.973. This will crash your machine. Remember, CNC machines don't crash, operators crash them. Number three, putting the correct height in the wrong tool number. We were supposed to be setting up tool number two. If we put 3.793, the correct value, but in the wrong tool field, you're going to crash your machine. Now, I've never actually broken a tool before. I've heard others have. So if you have to replace that tool, cardinal sin, especially when it's a tool that you regularly use or if you share your machine or you work in a shop where others use that machine, this for us is tool number 31. It's our go-to three flute quarter inch end mill. When it's at the machine, we always assume that it has been set up with the correct height. So if you take that tool out because you broke it, or in this case, we've got some chip loading in those flutes, and you replace it, you must go first over to the height gauge, measure that tool's height, and update PathPilot. That way, the next person to use that tool isn't going to crash the machine. Number five, putting the wrong tool in the machine. Now this sounds silly, who could possibly do that? I'll tell you, you get in a rhythm and you can do it. In this example, PathPilot's doing a great job. It's saying insert tool 49 in the spindle. That's for us, the shear hog. We start so many programs though with the Superfly, which for us happens to be tool 47, pretty close in numbers. If you accidentally put the wrong tool in, and especially if that tool is longer, here we'd be okay, we'd be fortunate because if we put in the Superfly, it's a shorter tool than the shear hog, so we might be able to catch it. But when that tool is longer, the machine's probably going to be rapiding when the tip of that tool crashes into your workpiece or your vise or your machine table. Again, we've never done this, but we heard of a friend who did this where they accidentally put in the twist drill, not realizing that PathPilot was first telling them to put in the much shorter spot drill. Number six, loading the wrong program. Here you can see we've got two different files, the exact same file name, 1001. PathPilot will accept both .nc and .tap files. Which one is the right one? Which one did you post out? Which one is, is even with a Tormach post processor? Really important to make sure you've got either clearly labeled files or you pick the correct file off of your thumbstick. One of the rings we're excited about with PathPilot 2.0 is even better and easier web integration with things like Dropbox to be able to sync our files online, get rid of those thumbsticks, be able to update files and manage them all over the shop from my office desk as well as at the controller. PathPilot also has a great graphical interface, very easy to navigate and use, really good way to check to make sure you've got the right program posted. Number seven, similar to number six, would be loading the right program, just the wrong version of it. This can be a really big contributor to crashing your machine. Card here, by the way, to our bloopers video where you can enjoy some machine crashes at our expense. This happened to us recently. We decided to update our work coordinate system in Fusion 360. So rather putting our Z0 at the top of our part, we came in and we moved it to the top of our stock. It was the right thing to do. It was gonna make for a more reliable process, a more accurate part. We even went ahead and we reposted it. We put it on our thumbstick, and then, but then we forgot to bring the thumbstick over to the computer. We forgot if we had reloaded that most recent version of the program, we hit cycle start and bad things happened. Number eight, work coordinate systems in general. Just like I mentioned in number seven, making a minor adjustment and not posting out the updated program can cause a crash. But in general, we see that this is the biggest disconnect that people have when they're going from CAD and CAM and hopping over to the real world of actually setting up the machine. There's so many different places that you can place your X, Y, Z, zero point, and it can be the top left edge of the part, it could be the top left edge of the piece of material that may be bigger than the part. You can even move it to the bottom of your part. You may put it in the center of the part. 
understanding where your work coordinate system is and making sure you've done the correct steps between your cam and your machine setup is absolutely imperative. And finally, number nine, we love our Heimer. But the number one mistake we see people do is when they put the Heimer or whatever tool they're using to find Z0, they forget to update the PathPilot tool number with the correct tool number for that tool. For us, it's always tool 99. If you don't do this, you will be off usually a significant amount, mostly because the Heimer is quite a bit longer than most of the tools that we use in our shop. So if we jog that down, but instead of tool 99, it's say tool 31, the Tormach is rightfully going to think the part is in a completely different location than it really is. And this is the number one cause that we see that leads to crashes that tend to be the not fun ones where you're really running the spindle or whole tool body into a vise or workpiece pretty hard. Like I said, folks, these are all theoretical things. We've never actually crashed a machine or broken a tool, but hopefully you can use them. Take care. See you soon.